I have failed you. Yesterday was an embarrassment! Spooky Scary Sunday is... is everything to me. And yet yesterday, I was unprepared. I apologize. But we're back today. Spooky Scary Sunday, guys. Who cares about all this serious talk, guys? Come on, come on. We know what time it is. It's time to get our snacks. Guys, go ahead and get your snacks. Get something good. It's gonna be a great episode, all right? You do this every time. Why are you still standing there? Go get your snacks. I can see you sitting there since you want to be smart about it. Get your snacks. So if you don't know what Spooky Scary Sunday is by now, then um, I'm going to just be normal with y'all this week. Subscribe. Okay? You're new. Obviously, if you weren't, you would know what Spooky Scary Sunday is. So take a minute, subscribe. And while you're at it, Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. On Instagram, we're still not verified that over 923,000 followers. So help me get to a million. Maybe they'll verify me then. Anyway, Spooky Scary Sunday is a show where every Sunday, all the samurai get together. We gather and congregate with our small little measly 6 million subscriber base. And we kick back and relax and watch some scary videos sent in by you guys via Twitter using the hashtag Spooky Scary Sunday. You go to Twitter, follow me at Corey Kinchin, which I already told you about 30 seconds ago. Hashtag Spooky Scary Sunday and leave a link to the scariest video that you know and if your video gets picked you get a freaking shout out dude so sit back relax grab some snacks go ahead get you a bowl of apple jacks with a side of butter toast and finish it off with a glass of orange juice and with that being said first video <laughs> now this first video is called railroad and it was uploaded by meat canyon it's a meat canyon video. Wait, you, you know what time it is. Now this was sent to us by Bryson. So Bryson, hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, I think Bryson is a cool name. Bryson. Reminds me of Bison from uh, Street Fighter. All right, let's, uh, that was a nice shout out. Turn that up, turn that up. Oh, it's cars. I always forgot how beautiful it can be up here at night. You sure is right about that, Lottie McQueen. Sometimes, okay. it feels like we're the only two people in the world that know about this spot. Funny you should say that, because I saw a train on my way up here today. Well, trains are pretty common around these parts. I mean, there's tracks everywhere. Well, it was downright strange. It wasn't like no train I'd never seen before. Hmm. Was it blue? Like a mystical blue, almost as if the train had become one with the air around it. This feels oh, so oh, weird. Oh, yes, God, I couldn't have said it any better myself, Lightning. Man, that's exactly what it looked like. <laughs> when I had that wreck a while back. Oh boy, I remember. We all didn't think you were gonna make it out alive. That's pretty weird. When I had the wreck, I... <laughs> I had such an odd dream. Uh... Okay. It was a strange feeling. It was a place 
have never seen before, but felt as if I'd spent a lifetime there. Mm-hmm. The only resemblance from the normal world was the sound of a train coming my way. It is called Railroad. I felt fear more than anything. Though it was the sound of a train, it felt like a thunderstorm. Like an earthquake was going to destroy the ground around me. And I would fall into a sea of nothingness. All I could do was anxiously hold my breath and brace for impact. Oh my god! But the impact never came. Instead, a smiling face appeared, oh! melting from the darkness, pale and cold, screeched forward on its tracks, only to stop right in front of me. Ew! It was as if I'd never <laughs> spoken a single word in my life. I, I couldn't conjure a single sentence to say to him. Nightmare fuel! Dude, I'm driving the off! Train finally spoke. And I can still hear his voice in my mind. I have seen past the farthest star. And I have gone to the edges of the earth. It's the devil! Taste from the tallest chalice. Nope! Dying at the largest halls. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No my ask in return is your soul. What? The you devil! A chance at life without pain. Mm -mm. Without heartache. Nope. All this I can give you and more. Listen! Just for your soul. Oh my goodness! I asked back to him, what of life after death? What of the paradises that await me in heaven above? The train did not look back. It didn't make a single sound. Through all the steam and moving parts controlling this demonic vessel, its only reply was... Drain me of woes. Turned his back on you. That's why my tracks still push me forward. I don't understand why. My body you... was afraid. Something new and unknown. May it be death? May it be hardship? Suddenly I woke from this nightmare. Wow. I tell you what, that's downright horrifying. Well, I. I haven't really slept well since then. Oh, come on, Lightning. It's just a train. Nothing to be afraid of out here. <laughs> Uh-oh. I know you're right. Uh-oh. There's nothing to be afraid of now. Uh-oh! <laughs> you gotta hand it to me, Kane. He don't play around. <laughs> Now this next one is old, but I finally got the permission to react to it. So shout out to you, Nightmare Tales. It's called The Diner, it's uploaded by Nightmare Tales. This was sent to us by Marty on Twitter. So Marty, I appreciate you. This is your shout out. This is your time, Marty. To all the Martys across the world. Ah. On a cold, dark night, around two in the morning, a young man and his father sat in a remote 24-hour diner waiting to be served. This narrator got a nice, nice voice. Guys, Loki, I feel like I have a great, like, narration voice. Like, check me out. There was a man. <laughs> Stop, you're making me laugh. The older man, who was sadly slowly going senile, had insisted on going out for some soup. Not having the energy to argue, the son took him out, for at least this way his father would be happy 
and then he could get some peace and quiet. Yeah. The waiter walked over, welcomed them to the diner, and then asked if they were ready to order, to which they replied, they were. That looked crazy. The waiter recommended for them to try the burgers. Way to look crazy. Best in the West, he said, with a smile that made their skin crawl. Oh. They declined and proceeded to order what they came for. The old man ordered tomato soup and the son a coffee. When the waiter walked away, the son asked his father if he had thought the waiter looked familiar. Not surprisingly, the father said he had never seen him before. But why? he asked. The son proceeded to tell him that he thought he looked a lot like a man he saw on the news that was wanted for murder in another state, uh... but he could easily be mistaken. This made the father quite uncomfortable, so he told his son to shut up and change the subject. <laughs> Instead, the son then got up, told his father he was going to the bathroom and would be back in a minute. Uh oh. The father waited and waited. Uh... Almost 15 minutes had passed and his son hadn't returned. Bro, go check he on also him. hadn't seen the waiter again. Where was his son? And where was his soup? <laughs> Just as he finished asking himself, <laughs> Where's my son? But more importantly, where's my soup? Of this, the waiter appeared with the soup. Oh, that's blood. Well, you took your time with that, the old man said. Dang. I'm sorry, sir, said the waiter. Old people we had some issues in the kitchen. Where's my son? The old man asked the waiter. Oh, I'm sure he's not far. I have a feeling you'll be seeing him really soon. And with this, he placed the bowl down on the table with a uh... smile that would have given anyone the creeps. The old man turned to his soup and then dipped his spoon in to take his first mouthful. As he lifted the spoon, something else came with it. Oh! Some glasses. What the hell? He thought to himself. A horrible chill ran through his body when he realized whose glasses they were. His son's. The old man looked across at the waiter and was overcome with rage when he saw the waiter's sickly grin oh, staring we're back about at to him. Die now. He grabbed a knife, leapt out of his seat, and stabbed ah. the waiter in the chest. The blade went straight through his heart, and while bleeding profusely all over the floor, yeah. he died. Boy. Right at this moment, the son appeared from the kitchen and screamed at his father, No! What? what? Done! It was a prank! We were playing a prank! The old man couldn't believe what he was hearing. <laughs> a, a prank? But he's a... Oh my god, he thought to himself as the reality quickly set in. I've killed him. The father and son had to act quickly. They grabbed the body and decided to stash it <laughs> in the cool room. Yo! No! <laughs> Call the police! No, that's on y'all, alright? This ain't on the dad! ...to buy them some time. They would then clean the floor and play disappear too much. as if they had never been there. Y'all princes everywhere. Perfect, they thought. There were no witnesses and no one to stop them. Well, that's what they thought. Until they slid back the door to the cool room and were greeted by a sight so shocking it made both of them wish they were dead. They had disturbed the waiter's brother, hard at work, making meat for burgers. The best in the West, apparently. Not that they would ever know. That was the cleanest double twist. I've ever seen in my life. Now this next one is called Mermaids and it was uploaded by the GOAT himself, David Romero. If y'all don't know who David Romero is, I'm talking Pleasant Inn. I'm talking uh, Midnight Snack. I could go on. Now this was sent to us by Bob Man, so Bob Man, See, I was trying to think of a Bob the Builder joke. Ah! Mermaids. That is not my idea of a mermaid. What's wrong with your arms? Why is your face... Oh my... Ugh! Oh my... 
guys, whatever you thought mermaids looked like was wrong. Grudge sound effects? No. Oh, <laughs> that was just a loud, it's a loud noise. That's all. What is that? What is that? Look at the big one! Woo-wee! Now that was unsettling. Y'all know one of my deepest fears is the ocean. Just the thought of being down so deep that the sun's rays cannot reach you anymore. Utter and complete darkness and then just some huge massive organism floating towards you now this next one is called night security training video and i'm a little hyped and i'm a little biased the thumbnail was freddy fastbear so i know this has to do with fnaf it was uploaded by squimpus mcgrimpus one of the most fire YouTube names I ever heard. Now this was sent to us by Fate Nians. By the way, I I don't know how. By the way, I don't know how I'm supposed to be saying that. He also said, whenever you see this, better slice that like button. I think he was talking to y'all on that one. Go ahead and do it right down there. Thank you. But thank you for sending me this. This is now your shout out for the next three seconds. Enjoy. All right then. <laughs> Welcome to your new job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. All right. This video will elaborate on your duties as a nighttime security guard and will get you up to speed on the tool. This is so authentic. This legitimately seems like a video <laughs> that they would sit you in a room and. <coughs> <sighs> Sometimes I get too excited, I choke on my spit. Guard, and we'll get you up to speed on the tools you will be using. All right. Section one, CCTV system. Oh, I hate them cameras. On your work desk should be a large tablet. Instead of using a desktop computer to access CCTV cameras, you'll be using this touchscreen tablet. Freaking Pressing tablet. Pressing the button on the side will boot it up and introduce you to a possibly unfamiliar interface. There should be a map of the restaurant on the bottom right corner. Yep. Pressing the buttons on I the remember. map will change the. Oh, I got kill! I got chills. Ooh, I got chills. Section two, door <laughs> controls. You might have noticed the two large doors to your sides, no. and also your lack of provided flashlight. But why is that? You will need to use a flashlight with these specially engineered door controls. Uh -huh. Pressing the white button will activate the light set outside the door, illuminating a- <laughs> This is fire! Possible dangers. During the night, we allow our animatronics to roam the building to keep them from locking up and keeping repair costs low. However, this does pose the threat of an animatronic entering your office and yeah. possibly damaging valuable equipment. Or Use you. the security doors to keep them out of your office. Whoa, the hidden room in the back room hallway, the boards break. I, I gotta pause this, guys. The boards break them. I'm in there. I'm in there. Michael, your father. I'm your father. I want to talk to you. I only want to see my boy. Ah, I'm, the lore is escaping me. Michael Afton? So that means if the father was talking, this is William Afton. I'm in there, Michael. Yo, this is crazy, dude. This is crazy, dude. Oh! 
That scared me. I think I'm gonna have to give y'all a 10 this week just cause that video. This next one is called The Night Shift and it was uploaded by Animated Horror Flicks. What's up, dude? Now this was sent to us by, I don't have their name pulled up. Now this was sent to us by Buck195. So um, you gonna give me a nickel and make that $2? Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, uh, um, the animated horror flicks presents just reaching for my water bottle the night shift whenever it's a night shift of anything it's gonna be good man facts i don't usually hold back when it comes to talking about my job which was working security at the sub level of a local hospital Okay. You'd be surprised to know how common break-ins were at that place. Oh. Which usually ended up being a couple of junkies trying to get high on some of the weird chemicals that were being kept in the labs. Nah. Security. It started out as a regular graveyard shift at work, but I'll lead in with a curious backstory regarding the doors that led to the morgue. In order to keep the place more sanitized, they had recently installed sliding doors that would automatically open if someone passed in front of them. I like this animation. Style. Thus removing the need to touch any handles or doorknobs, and prevent anyone from leaving the doors open by accident. There wasn't anything really unique about the sliding doors, except for the fact that they would sometimes open and close by themselves. Oh, hey, no. Nah. That by itself didn't seem like such a big deal, since this could have been caused by something small such as a moth flying in front of the sensor. Until one night, I realized that it would always happen at the same time. Oh! Every night, at exactly 3am, the doors would open for a few seconds and then close. It's creepy. It's a demon! I was convinced that the doors had been programmed with some kind of time-based trigger, but when I contacted the company that installed the doors, they told me that it wasn't possible since the doors were designed only to open when the sensors were triggered or forced open manually. Uh, well it's not the so latter. So it continued without any explanation for a long time after that and became sort of a ritual for me and my co-workers to watch the doors open and close on the monitors every night. Usually there would be at least two guards on duty, but that night I ended up working the graveyard shift by myself uh -oh. because the other security guard suddenly became ill and there wasn't enough time to find a temp who could fill in at such short notice. Okay. Not good. Just to be clear, I had been working as a security guard for a long time, so I was no stranger to danger and I wasn't worried about working alone at night. Mm. Besides, the work was pretty straightforward. All I had to do is make sure all the doors were locked and secured and keep a close eye on the monitors. That's all you ever have to do. Sounds easy enough, but let me tell you something that's gonna make it a little bit easier for you. Let me bring something to work that's gonna make it a little bit easier. That I don't care about no ghosts or no 3 a.m. demons, these buckshots. There were only two cameras, one overlooking the control room and another one at the other end of the corridor overlooking the entrance to the morgue. As the clock approached 3 a.m., I did what all the guards on duty would do, sit back and enjoy the show. Although the novelty of seeing this phenomenon had long worn off, it was still something I would anticipate and would often give me the chills, hmm. seeing how it was the entrance to the morgue and that you could sense a sudden rush of cold air every time the doors would open. It's a demon! Even from the other end of the corridor. I told you! I watched patiently as the doors opened followed by the howling rush of cold air that could be heard from under the door. It was when I glanced away from the door and looked to the monitors that I noticed something strange. The doors remained open. Uh oh. At first I thought it might be a glitch with the monitor and I was simply looking at a frozen frame. But then I saw the lights flicker. Ooh -wee. I waited for a few minutes but it soon became clear that I would have to head on down to the end of the corridor since it was strictly prohibited for the doors to the morgue to remain open. As I stepped out into the corridor, I acknowledged a significant drop in temperature which I knew was going to get considerably worse as I approached the morgue. Get the heater out! I gradually made my way down the corridor and turned the corner that ultimately what? led me to the sliding doors. 
Draw your weapon, sir! I had sir. hoped that the doors might have closed by the time I got there, but just as I had seen on the monitor, the doors were in fact still open and the camera was functioning normally. Only when I turned my back to observe the corridor did the doors finally close, which was quickly accompanied by a cold chill in the air. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I could feel an overwhelming sense of someone standing right behind me as the hairs on the back of my neck began to spike. I told him. Then he going to turn around like... Bro, as soon as I feel somebody by... Hey! I don't waste any time. If you... If you are in a situation and you feel somebody behind you, and you turning around like these? <laughs> hey, whatever happens to you, you just you earned that one. But it turned out to be more of the same eerie silence as before. Since the doors had already closed without having to actually enter the morgue. I considered myself fortunate and hurried back to the control room to make sure nothing else was out of place. I closed the door and locked it from the inside and for a moment I was expecting it to be business as usual as I sat back down in front of the monitors. But after taking a quick sip of my coffee, I realized the coffee was stone cold. Mm. Not just lukewarm as you would expect, but genuinely chilled. I hadn't been away from the desk for that long, so it didn't make much sense at all. But then I remembered that I had felt that same chill before at the other end of that corridor. Out of curiosity, I decided to rewind the security footage back to when I approached the doors to see if I could spot anything out of the ordinary. Which is when I witnessed something that I simply couldn't explain. What? There was a girl standing in front of the doors behind me. I couldn't really make out her face due to her <gasps> long black hair. That was a stark contrast to the white gown she was wearing. She just stood there staring right at me and then walked towards the exit. To this day, I can't explain it, because I had just been there and I hadn't seen anyone. It was when I checked the other camera overlooking the entrance to the control room that really sent a chill down my spine and still gives me nightmares to this day. <gasps> When the lights came back on, it was as if nothing happened. The door to the control room was open despite being locked from the inside just moments before. Due to the mysterious power surge, most of the data on the drives had been completely corrupted. Okay. But some of the security footage did survive. And you got me on that one. on to it ever since. Mm -hmm. I guess now would be the time to ask yourself, do you believe in ghosts? That was clean. That was clean. This next one is called Do You See It Too? And this was uploaded by Super Freak Media. This was sent to us by Maya, who said, uh, Good luck. P.S. I love you. I love all of you samurai as well. You guys are near and dear to my heart. Right here. Yeah. Zoom in. Yeah. Setting the tone. Oh boy. Buckle up. Oh my God. I saw some. I saw some outside. How to interpret dreams. It's about to be fire. Saw a shadow. So, sit back, dreaming. Sleep, come on. 
Where is it? It's outside. It's outside? Nah, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> I, I ain't doing this right it's now. Nothing there. What the hell are you doing? David, he can't be Huh? Hey, I didn't see anything. You really need to just try and calm down. This isn't doing either of us any good. Let's just, let's just try and go back to sleep. Yeah? David, so I'm out there. Getting us up out of there. Pack your stuff. It's standing by the back door. Up. Oh. It's All gonna right. get in. You're going through the front door here. Look at me. Look at me. Sophie. Nothing is gonna get in here. You're safe. <laughs> safe, huh? You ain't safe. No. And I just farted from that jump scare. You hear all that racket? Oh, please. We need to call Ghostbusters. What is this? 1970? Hello? Nine, 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 one, Where's your gas? Right, I need you to stay on the line for me so I can take some details. What is your emergency? Someone's in our house. Okay, have they broken in? Yeah. Okay, and where are they now? It's downstairs. Me. I need you to stay where you are. Okay. I'm on the door if you know. Okay, okay. stay where you are. What is the address? 28 Woodland Heights. Okay, we've dispatched an officer. They'll be with you soon. Okay. Try not to worry and just stay where you are. All right, thank you. Hello? Yes, I'm still I here. No I love that accent, guys. I... They're on their way. They're downstairs. Are you stepping on mouse traps down there? Don't be a hero. David, the cops are coming. Mm, they never learn. All you had to do was call a duty camp until they got there. Who's that? Why would you do that? Rookie mistake. Damn it. Is 
The police are on their way. David, if you don't get your behind back. I'm gonna need the army for whatever that was. Yes, you do. So, what is in our house? Why I, is it here? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's been there for months now. Watch it. It's not this. It only comes at night. It's like the less I sleep, the closer it gets. But none of us have slept for weeks. Is that a lock on that door? What? what? Sophie, speak! What? Don't say that. The door was unlocked. Come on. Yep. See. What are you waiting for? Get that killer instinct, David. Just a nightmare, guys. Everything is okay. I would have had to turn on the PlayStation at that point because I ain't going back to sleep. Nope. It's a jump scare. Huh? Oh, I thought she was about to fall off the bed. <laughs> Don't 
Don't, no, David. Don't, David. Come on, David. What you doing? He gonna get closer. Dude, I'm I'm sitting up. I'm turning the TV on. I'm turning the game on. I'm turning the light. That was out cold. Super Freak Media, y'all put your foot in and that one. Alright, you guys, I think we're gonna end with that one. Wow. Wow. This week, I think this is the first ever 10 out of 10 week from you guys. Literally everything we did was it was special. I want to congratulate you guys on the job well done with the submissions. But there's always next week. Let's see if y'all can keep up with the fire. Wow! Especially that last one. That FNAF security video. David Romero. This was an all-star cast. Spooky Scary Sunday. Gotta love it. See you next week. Cause my name is Kareem Kinchin.